supremacy. And with this particular video, I want to expose the African-centered deception and distraction within the black conscious community. I've been wanting to do this video for a while. Now I'm finally going to do it. You got a lot of people in a black conscious community that's pushing Africa. They push Africa in the form of Egypt, in the form of Ethiopia. Some of them push it in with Israel, with Morocco, some dealing with South Africa, Liberia. They talking about go back to Africa. It's about Africa. You're African. Study your African history. You need to know who you are as an African. And it's all about being an African. And if you know who you are as an African, that's going to solve all your problems. And, you know, you got to go back to Africa. That's the motherland. And Africa is the richest continent in the world. And that's where all the resources are. You need to get back in touch with Africa. You get, need to get in tune with the people in Africa. But yet the people that are telling you this have not got back in tune with Africa at all because otherwise they would be streaming from Africa don't get me wrong there's some that are they would be streaming their videos live from Africa they would be over there connected with land connected with a tribe connected with a king they would be established and they would have something established that you can come to and not just tour, not just be a tourist. They wouldn't just be a tour guide. But they tell you, you need to study your history and you need to get back in tune with Africa. And then you ask them, well, you in tune with it, you study for it. What has it done for you? What has it done for them? They don't have nothing in Africa. They don't know about nobody in Africa. They can't even get a king or a head of state or even a tribesman on the line, on live stream to talk about something that they're doing or they're setting up in Africa or just to even be involved in the conversation. With all they know about their African history and the knowledge of themselves being an African, what has it done for them? Some of them living right here in America, living in their mama's basement, Right here in America, paying rent, over here under this white man, right in this country. But they know all about Africa and their African history and who they are. They got a job working for the white man. They still under the devil right here in America. But they tell you, you knowing about Africa is somehow going to free you. If you just knew your African history, things would change. I'm telling you that that is a deception. You knowing your African history is not going to do anything but confuse you and distract you from what's at hand. These same people are making money from you off of telling you about your African history. If Africa is so rich, why do you need my money to tell me about Africa? Since you know your history, know who you are, why you ain't tapped into all those resources that are in Africa where you're still asking me for money? You still trying to bring me to come up to lectures and to pay to watch PowerPoints and live streams. If you are in tune with your history and the knowledge of who you are. Of the richest continent in the world. Why you don't have any of the wealth. What is it doing for you? You still need my money. You still over here just like me, even though you got all you are a master teacher with the knowledge of Africa. You know all about Africa, all about the tribes, the pyramids, how they were built, the Anks. You know all about Africa. Nobody got more knowledge than you. Nobody is a higher scholar than you on Africa. But you over here living under the white man just like me. You over here under white supremacy. What has your knowledge of Africa and your African history done for you? Nothing but created a hustle for you in America. So now you can hustle African identity, building up people's ego based on the identification with being African, but they being slaughtered over here in America like slaves. They being shot down and killed and murdered in the streets. 
But when I talk to you about that, about what are you doing in America and how are we solving our issues and the problems that we confront here in America, then you say, oh, we need to go back to Africa. Us about Africa, you need to know your African history and your African self. That's a distraction because you don't want to deal with the reality of the problems of being black or being African in America, but you still want to capitalize. You still want to make money off of pushing an African identity. How has an African-centered reality or African identity improved the condition of black people in America since that information has been distributed? How have we progressed? How has that worked for us? I know a lot of people got rich. A lot of institutions got opened up. A lot of people got uh, integrated. The African-centeredness within white institutions, white universities, they integrated their ideology with white supremacy. They've opened up a lot of charter schools. And now it's now African identity, African centeredness or African centered identity has just become a different flavor of white supremacy. You got a regular public school, you got different types of private schools, you got Catholic schools, and then you got a chocolate school, a different flavor of white supremacy, an African school. But it's still setting you up for the same jobs that, that the white man got. It's still setting you up to be under white supremacy. But you just have an African identity about it. And it's just more expensive. Well, really, to be an African-centered person, you got to be a middle-class person. You got to have money to afford the fabric and the dajikis, and to 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 be to present that image. It, it's gonna cost you more money to be African-centered. It's expensive to know who you are and know your history, and ain't set foot in Africa. And if not, you ain't going over there no longer than for a vacation. You coming right back over here to America. It's very expensive. What has it done for us? The African-centered paradigm is a scam. The center of you being an African is your solar plexus. That's where your African center is. You were born an African. For lack of a better word, you were born a melanated person. And if you take that melanated person and put them in America, then you're going to have what you call an African in America. You're going to have Africa in America. Because all you call in our culture in Africa, it came from us. It doesn't define us. We define it. We created African culture when we were in Africa. And now we're black in America. We'll create African culture in America. But true culture is that which uplifts the people and solves the problem that they confront in any territory or geographical region or location that they exist in. So our culture is a solution to our ecological and social problems. So we need new culture in America, new African culture, to deal with the situation that we confront as a tribe in America. The problems of tribes in Africa is not the same as problems of tribes of, of blacks in America. We have to solve our own problems. The people in Africa, they don't have the tribes in Africa, they don't have the same exact problems that we do, nor the same concerns that we do, nor the same value systems that we do. That's just a reality. We are a different tribe in America. It doesn't mean that we can't unify, associate, or identify with our African brothers and sisters where we can. But be not distracted. And don't use being African-centered as a form of escapism to stand up and be a strong black man in America. And to find alternatives and to find true solutions to, to confront and deal with the real problems that we face within this country. Because that's just, that's escapism. But they're scamming you. You need to study your history and buy these books and come to these lectures and find out who you are. Have you found out who you are? Then why are you still living in the hells and smells of the wilderness of North America? You telling me I need to go back to Africa and Africa is where is that? Why are you still over here talking to me? Why do you want American dollars? Why you don't want African money? Africa print their own money in different countries. Why you don't go over there? Why you don't go over there and live in Uganda? Live in the Congo where the Ebola at? Why don't you go over there and fight malaria? 
why are you in America if you are a master teacher or an expert on African identity and on our African history? What has that done for you? But still make you have to rent out white owned institutions to have lectures and to have events. What has it done for you? Other than become a t-shirt that you need white, you need to wholesale from white manufacturers and buy their equipment to mass produce. What has your African eye centered identity done for you? Nothing but made you a hustler in America. You're just a different type of a hustler. You're not a revolutionary. You're not a nationalist. You're just a hustler and you're trying to survive and you found you a new hustle called African identity and you plan into people's egos so they can feel good under white supremacy. Not stand up and be the true warriors that they really are, the true sovereigns and true independent beings that can really navigate their way out of oppression. No. Just feel African under white oppression. Feel African while you're being treated like a nigga. As long as you're being oppressed and, and, and you feel African while, while it's happening, it's okay. It's another opiate. It's like Jesus Christ. What a Christian say, praise Jesus. Your African center scholar is saying praise Africa, but we living in the same dynamic and same situations as Christians that are too passive to stand up in the real world and fight against the real problems that exist on this planet that we have to man up to deal with. What have your African history done for you but make you debate and come up with an argument against another black person that got a different set of facts and ideas about Africa than you do? What has being African center done for you, black man in America? What is it doing for you? That's like somebody giving you a house, saying you got a house. And it's yours, you got land, and it's yours. But you got to find it on the largest continent on the planet. It's yours, you got it, you own it. It's who you are, it's your land, but you just got to find it. And you got to go through thousands, hundreds of thousands of tribes to find it. Hell, you can even go any, meeny, miny, mo. See, your, your African center people are living in history. And they don't realize history is relative to perception. So what somebody wrote down as history was their perception of reality. So the journalist was a perceiver. So you living in somebody else's narrative of what history is. History does no longer exist the way that it was. History is over with. So you living through the eyes of someone else's perception who journalized history. And that becomes your fairy tale and your imaginative reality that allows you to escape from the real circumstance that you live in. That could be a good circumstance if you're willing to confront it and stop trying to escape it. But we talk about the Hebrew Israelites and talk about them dealing with the Bible and dealing with the white man's Bibles. And using the Bible as escapism and living back in ancient uh, history and ancient Israel and living by curiously through made up characters and fables and stories and myths. We talk about them. But then we do the same thing living in somebody else's perception of our history. Because the, 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 when you get to the root of the scholars and get to the essence of the, of the scholarship. You find a white man's face. You find a white scholar that's validating the essence of your entire reality, of your entire paradigm. And it has nothing to do with you being in Africa, with you thriving in Africa, with you ruling in Africa. But it has everything to do with you validating white scholarship. It has you, everything to do with you being validated by white supremacy and validated by white institutions and being validated by capitalism in America. It has everything to do with that and absolutely nothing to do with Africa. All these African, these African centered people, what have they done? What have they achieved? They just selling you on the idea. They talk about Pan-Africanism, but they're not unified with no African nation and no African tribe. And it's enough for them to be unified with. It's enough for them to have an open dialogue and to be establishing something and creating something. But in their hearts, they're really afraid of the white man. They think they will be treason to white supremacy or treason to this country, treason to the United States. In their heart, they fear white supremacy. But they claim they're African-centered. 
They claim they're African centered, but you capitalistic centered. You capitalism centered with an African flavor. It's like Kwanzaa. It's just it's just it's just, just a African flavored hol white holiday. It's just a program that they kind of overlaid on top of another one. But the white supremacy still running in the background. What has been African centered done from you done for you and done for the people who teach it? What have they done in Africa? What do they own and control in Africa right now? Oh, I own a hotel in Africa. I own some real estate in Africa. I own a restaurant in Africa. How is that nationalism? White people own property in Africa. Look at South Africa. And the white people there don't want to give up the land. We look at Africa now like exploiters. We're more dealing with the land than even unifying with the actual people. We're talking about how much gold and how much resources and the wealth is there in the Nile Valley and how wealthy it is. How wealthy it is. And we, we sound like white colonists and white exploiters that we can only see Africa from an exploitive perspective. So our African-centered identity is an exploitive identity. But the only problem is we've been unsuccessful at, at our exploits because we have not exploited anything. We've not been nothing but went over to Africa and been a tourist or engaged in some type of capitalism. And I think maybe there have been some capitalistic exploitation between uh, investors and, and, and American business people in African countries. There has been some exploitive relationships, but nothing dealing with nation building, nothing building with, de building with the end and the destruction of white supremacy, nothing dealing with black or, or global African supremacy, nothing dealing with that at all. That does, that, that's not it. Come on. Why are you not in Africa with your land that this tribe that gave you? All your brothers will just accept you over there. They love you. They want you to come back home and be in Africa. Why are you not back? Why you ain't there living at home with Africans? Being accepted, giving your land, and living comfortably. Why are you not there? Right now, all your videos should be live streamed from Africa. Not Chicago, not Detroit, not Atlanta, not Harlem. All your videos should be live for people live stream from Africa. If Africa is where it's at and you're not going to fight here in America, you're not going to stand up and fight as a black man in America. Why are you still here in America if Africa is where it's at? If the solution to black problems is Africa, if we need to go back to Africa, go back home to Africa, be African, study our African history. Why are you still here in America? Because that's a scam. That's a deception and it is a distraction. From the reality of our situation and our predicament in America. That we have made capitalism look appealing. Because we put a chocolate and African flavor on it. When we truly should be standing up and learning to live like warriors and revolutionaries within this country, within the United States. That we must become a nation in America. We can't just look to Africa. Africa has its own problems, its own situations, its own politics, its own tribes. And they're not just going to give us nothing or hand over nothing to us. So that's just not the truth. Whatever you want, you're going to have to earn, you're going to have to work for it. So if we want to be respected, black men in America, then we're going to have to stand up, black men in America. And we're going to have to stand up outside of white supremacy. And we're going to have to stand up outside of a false, egotistical, African-centered identity. We're going to have to stand up on our own and demand the respect, not only from the white man and the European, but demand the respect of the world as an independent and fearless, courageous, noble, and dignified people. That's what we're going to have to do. You won't escape that through African scholarship. You're going to have to stand up today. You're going to have to demand your position today. You're going to have to take hold and seize power today, black man, of your community, of your family, of your neighborhood, of your society. Today, you're going to have to stand up. Don't use Africa as an escapism when it's just another, it's just another venture within white supremacy. It's just another capitalistic venture. That's it. It is, it is deception and it is distracting you from what you really have to be dealing with.
because nobody in Africa going to save you from police brutality and, un and injustice in America. No African is going to save you. No African is going to save you. No African king is going to save you. We got to save ourselves. They're not going to save you. We're going to have to fight on our own. Capitalism is not going to save us. We've been making money. Look what they did to Black Wall Street. We have to stand up and be true revolutionaries. Stop trying to hide behind African scholarship and an African-centered identity. Stop trying to hide behind that, man. And stand up and man up. The time is now. You people say you, you're African and you, you, you with Africa. You're not with the Hebrew Israelites. You're not with the Moors. You're, you're with Africa. No, you're not. You with Harlem. You with Detroit. You with the fucking NYPD and what they got going on. You're not with no goddamn Africa, man. It is nothing African about you besides your ego. Besides your false perception of who you are. There's no difference. They cannot see no African. Nobody in this country look at you can see an African. Even if you got a Dajiki on, they still like, now that's a nigga with a Dajiki on. You're not fooling no goddamn body. And the people that you are fooling are the ones that want to be fooled. Because they want to get high off that false and imaginative African centered reality when there's just no truth to it. I'm challenging you to be a black man and stand up as a black man. Yeah, you African. Unquestionably. You are, but you African right here. And you better be a true and real African right here. Because if you're talking about you African-centered, but you're not going to stand up as a warrior right here in America, then you, you're a African. You fake. And nigga, we see you. We see that fake shit that you on. And you being exposed. We see you for what you're doing. A true African ain't going to stand up where he at. He ain't looking back. He looking now. He doing something now. He's not being a punk in America and think he going to escape to Africa and get some type of respect over there. This king over black supremacy. Signing out.